here today to talk about the new SugarServe product. And with us, we, as always, have our two lovely hosts, Megan Sheehan, our sugar trainer and business analyst, and Justin Kielsau, our sugar practice manager. So they're going to dive into some of the major topics today. And as usual, if you have any questions, you can ask those throughout via the chat. And we will also be sending you the recording and slide deck for this so you can reference it later. All right, thanks, Deneen. So as Deneen said, today we are taking a look at Sugar Serve. Um, we're going to start by just talking a little bit about why Sugar thought it was worthwhile to develop a new product for service and the value of good customer service. And then we're going to do an overview of the Sugar Serve product as well as actually bring it up live on screen and demo the features that you're going to see. Um, so as always, we'll wrap up by talking about new releases and other Sugar news. Um, and if you have any questions, like Deneen said, feel free to send those our way via chat. So I think a lot of times businesses have the tendency to see customer service as a cost sink in their business. That's something you have to spend money on having customer service agents, on having software to help them, um, on training them to have the knowledge that they need to help your customers. Um, but I think sometimes what we forget to look at or measure is the value that providing good customer experience can bring to our business. Um, and so these are some statistics from a study um, that was comparing companies that had great customer experience to companies that had poor customer experience. And there was really a huge difference in terms of business that they were able to generate because of their customer experience that they were providing. Um, for transactional businesses, they saw 140% higher spend when they had great customer service. And subscription businesses had a 74% higher probability of renewal. They were able to keep their customers substantially longer than, than companies that were providing poor customer experience. And another thing that struck me when I was looking at this study is um, this study is five years old. It's not exactly brand new news. And yet this is still something that I think uh, businesses are struggling to wrap their minds around. Um, and it's probably even truer today because everyone's got this expectation of instant gratification at this point where, you know, when, when we're on the other end of customer service, we want things to be solved right away. And so we have to remember that when we're thinking about our customers and the, the experience we're providing to them, you know, that's where they're coming from and that's what they're expecting. So what keeps us from being able to provide great customer service? Well, there's kind of three key areas that often become barriers to providing excellent customer service. Um, one of those might be poor access to information, and that could be on the customer side, not having access to information that they need to be able to solve the problems themselves. Um, it might also be poor sharing of information among your customer service team. So like the example listed here, you know, this is the third time I'm calling about this. I don't wanna have to tell you everything about my problem all over again as if it was the first time I'm calling. So making sure that your agents have access to that call history um, so that they don't have to ask someone to repeat the same information over and over again. Uh, another problem is delayed responses. You know, if we don't get back to our customers in a timely fashion, um, they're going to have moved on with their life. They're going to have moved on to another business or another product um, and be looking for another solution at that point. They're not going to be coming back to us if we can't get their questions resolved in a timely fashion. And then finally, agent inefficiency. Um, if agents don't have access to the information that they need in a timely fashion, as well as understanding where somebody is in their customer journey, um, it's going to be harder for them to resolve questions and issues in a timely fashion. Okay, so what is good customer service? Well, good customer service is obviously a quick and effective resolution to an issue. Uh, but how do you get there? First, you have to know your customer and know the context of their issues. And with the CRM system guiding you through that process with all of your customer information, as well as information about the issue and possible resolutions, it can guide you to a much faster and better resolution. It's also important to allow your customer to have the choice of how they contact you. It has to be easy for the customer to contact you and access data about their open cases, their closed cases, as well as your knowledge base. And along those lines, 
self-service is becoming a very big part of customer service, and we're going to look at the uh, new Sugar Customer Portal. And it also has to be personalized and automated, and with the new Sugar workflows, well, with the re relatively recent workflow engine and their recent additions, you can do a lot of really cool stuff with automated notifications internally as well as externally with your customers. Uh, and that's important for good, prompt, consistent communication. All right, so understanding the value of good customer service, the barriers, and what it actually means to provide good customer service, um, Sugar took all of that information and thought about, well, how can we build a tool that's going to help you, you know, meet those needs? Um, really looking at how do we improve agent productivity so that you can reduce your cost of service while achieving higher customer satisfaction. Starting to take a look at the new features of the Sugar Serve product, uh, one of the biggest and most noticeable new features is the service console. Uh, you can see there up at the top, there's a cases section where there's little numbers one, three, and seven. Uh, that gives you a group of when the follow-up date is for your cases. So you can see what's due within 24 hours or due later than 24 hours or what's past due. And then the list view itself below that is a prioritized list of cases ordered by the follow-up dates. And follow-up dates can be set by users or set by Sugar BPMs, which can be programmed to look at your business hours, your holidays, your service level agreements, to make sure all of those rules are being followed for when you need to follow up on your cases. And then I'm going to demo this later, but something that's really cool from here that I like is the row actions, this little drop down on the left of the number, the case number. You get three different options. You can edit the new tab. Uh, I use this if I quickly want to edit a lot of fields on that case. It'll open the case in a new tab directly to the edit screen. I can copy a record URL, and I would use this for copying a link to a case and pasting the link into chat with another resource so they can quickly get to the case I'm looking at. Or just opening the case in a new tab, not in the edit view. Uh, I'd like to use this if I needed to open the case to relate a new bug or contact with the case via the case subpanels, Or if I wanted to view the case details screen dashlets that we'll look at a little later. Uh, such as a dashlet that automatically searches the knowledge base based on information from the case being viewed. Some other new features of the service console are the drawer that opens up when you click on a case. It will show you a number of different dashlets that show you data about the case and related to the case. You have Obviously, the case record dashlet where you can see and edit the entire case right from this dashboard. There's the comment log dashlet where you can read and add comments right from that screen. And then this is also available on the case detail screen as we'll see later. Uh, the lower left is the related account record dashlet where you can view or edit all of the related accounts data right from the dashboard. Uh, this is great for looking up account billing or contract status information to see what priority the account should receive. This is another dashlet that's available on the case detail screen. And finally, on the lower left is the case interaction dashlet. And this is great for seeing a chronological history of calls, meetings, emails, and notes and attachments related to the case. In addition, you can add any one of those items to the case right from there. And this is another one that's available from the detail screen. Moving right along, if you're jumping into the Sugar module, there's a new case tile view. Instead of the list view, you can view your cases in a Kanban style view. You can drag and drop your case cards from new to assigned to quickly move around the case status. And there's also some new detail dashlets I just mentioned. These are the same ones that were available on the service console case detail drawer, the comment log, the case interactions, and the related record dashlets. 
Only here you can configure them to do some even more cool stuff like show related any related record, whether it's the case or a number of contracts or bugs related to it. And we're going to look at that in just a little bit. Business Centers is a new module that Sugar has built to allow you to manage work hours, time zones, and holidays so that when you're setting those rules that Justin was mentioning for follow-up periods, those rules can be smart enough to understand that, for example, if a case gets opened at 5 o'clock on Friday, well, you don't need to follow up by Saturday even if you have an eight-hour follow-up response time. You need to follow up by the end of the day on Monday. And so it allows you to define various regional business centers for however many regions you're working in, uh, what time zone those centers are in, what their work hours are, as well as what holidays they have that are just days off for them. Sugar also included with Sugar Serve some new out-of-the-box process definitions and some new stock reports. Um, the process definitions in particular, we'll take a look at those in the demo because these are going to provide a good starting point for you in terms of being able to put in place those rules for managing your follow-up process. Um, obviously, you know, your rules may be slightly different than the standard rules that Sugar put in as a starting point, but just having that example to start from is really helpful for building out, you know, whatever your exact rules might be. And then finally, as I believe Justin mentioned earlier, um, Sugar has redesigned the self-service portal so that um, you have a new updated look and feel that's much more modern than their old portal. Um, they've redesigned the sign-up process so that um, it creates a contact in your CRM, so it kind of takes out some of the extra work that people were doing where you had to convert a lead first in order to give someone access to the portal. Um, they've added in knowledge-based searching before creating a case so that you're deflecting cases. If it's something where the user can quickly answer their own question, they don't even have to reach out to your support team and create a case at all. Um, new configurability, including which modules are displayed in the navigation bar, managing the layouts, managing logos, as well as adding a password reset link so that people can reset their own passwords, which is really good to not have to test your team for little things like that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do a product demo of those features. Pass control over to Justin here so you can demo his piece. Thank you, Megan. So here we're looking at a home screen dashboard called the Service Console. Uh, this is available in Sugar Serve. You can get to it just like any other dashboard. It can be configured just like any other dashboard you've already seen. One of the cool thing, or the cool part of this is that we have this new cases tab up here, and here's those numbers I mentioned earlier. I have four overdue, four due within the next 24 hours, and four due after the next 24 hours cases for that follow-up date. When I click on this, it brings me to that list and again sorts those based on when the follow-up date time is. So I can see all of my cases. It's got some cool color coding depending on what the status is, when the follow-up date is. I can quickly at a glance see what's, see what's going on, get some more information about it. And then when I go ahead and click on one of these, it brings up that drawer out of the side here with those four dashlets I can now see. Here's that case information where I can see all of the information I might want to see about the case. I can also edit the case right from here. I could say, well, this is now a, a medium priority. And I can now update my follow-up date to say, yeah, I followed up on that. Let's follow up next Friday and go ahead and save that. So now I've updated my case. And then here's where it can also be configured a little bit. I can see any related tasks to this record, contacts, documents. So some Pretty cool information you can see here. The comment log where I can see all of the comments that have been done on this case. I can add a new comment. Where I can tell people what I did. My status over here changed. 
all that good stuff. And then the account information down here where I can edit my account if I want to. And then case interactions where I can see all that history and when it happened three months ago, six months ago, 50 years ago, there was an email sent out. That's impressive. <laughs> <Years ago. laughs> and I can say, log another one in there. I can log a call. Customer. That was a held call today, just now. That was outbound. I called him and saved that. And now I've managed this whole case process without even leaving my service console. And I can simply jump to the next one, because this is now due in eight days, and open up the next case and work through that. If I did want to jump to the cases list view, I can do that, of course, by clicking on it here in the navigation bar. And I could view it in my tile view by clicking this button here. And here I've got it already filtered to my open cases because it's remembering what the last filter I had used was. So I could say, well, these aren't new. They're, they're pending input or this one's assigned. So I can just drag and drop those to update their status. And finally, if I open up a case, You'll notice I have my same intelligence panel over here on the right, but I can add those same custom dashlets here. For example, here I have my comment log uh, where I talk to the customer. I need to revisit next Friday and interaction. I see I, there was a call held 12 minutes ago. I'm getting all of that information without having to look uh, down here in the detail screen or scrolling down to my separate call, task, email, meeting, note, dashlets down here. And finally, here's that customizable dash so that I can see all of the related account information. And I can also see any bugs that are related to it in here because that's the way I configured it. I wanted to see any related bugs, so I can see those here. All right, moving right along. I'm going to go ahead and log in under the administrator view and show you what the business centers and the sugar BPMs look like. So the business centers um, allow you, again, to configure your different regional locations with the appropriate hours and days for each of them. So I'll go ahead and click on this North America business center here. Um, you can see the time zone that this has been set to. And then for each day of the week, uh, whether or not the business or this business center, I should say, is open on those days, and if so, what are the business hours? So that way, um, if something comes in, you know, at five o'clock on Friday, it knows that that's the close of business, and it should really start the counter up again or the timer up again at 8 a.m. Monday morning. If I scroll down a little bit, we're also going to see business center holidays here. So that's going to again allow you to enter those days off, and those. You know, even if it's on a work day, obviously we don't want to count those as business hours. Um, so you can track which holidays are applicable in each of your different regions. If I were to just switch over to another region here, here's my EMEA Business Center. Um, I'm going to have, you know, its own set of hours. They happen to be the same in their local time zone, but they could have been different. Um, and then its own unique set of holidays for that region. And these get used in your Sugar BPM process definition, um, specifically around setting that follow-up date, but really you could use it for any of your BPM definitions. Um, it's just a parameter that you could use to use the business hours factor in your timers. Um, so these are the three new um, out-of-the-box process definitions. Um, two of these are really simple. One is pretty complicated. Um, one of these is just making sure that you notify customers if the status of their case changes. So if the case status changes for any reason other than them sending us an email, let's send them an email letting them know that the status has changed. Um, other direction, if a customer sends us an email, we want to make sure that the case gets updated appropriately to say that we're not waiting on them anymore, um, that they have actually responded back to us and that it's our turn to do something on that case. And then finally, here's the complex one. This is the data management. So this is managing that follow-up date. And I don't want to get too far into the nitty-gritty details here um, because, again, you would probably wind up customizing this a little bit, modifying this a little bit to your exact process. 
But some of the key factors going on here is, first of all, um, potentially having a different first response time versus a follow-up response time. So the new case branch has its own SLA process to track how quickly you need to make that first initial response to somebody. And then once you've done that initial response, we go into this giant loop where we have a certain period of time to respond, and then probably we have to wait for them to get back to us. And so we're waiting for that to happen. We're following up with them after a certain period of time if they don't get back to us to say, hey, we haven't heard from you. We're going to auto-close your case after X days. Um, or if it is waiting on us, then every time they respond back to us, we need to reset the clock and say, okay, we've got to get back to them within X hours again now. And so all of this manage, date management or clock management feeds into that view that Justin was showing you in order to prioritize the cases so that list is being sorted with the ones that I need to follow up with next at the top of the list. And then finally, I've got the customer portal opened up here. Um, so this is the login screen. Uh, this allows you to um, sign in, obviously, if you already have a portal account, which I do, but before I do that, um, if I've forgotten my password, I can come in here and put my username in to get an email with a forgot password link. If I was using the portal for the first time, I can come in here and I can sign up. It's going to ask me for a variety of information uh, about who I am and where I work. Um, and then it's not going to automatically grant me access, at least by default. Um, most businesses want to have someone reviewing that information, making sure that it's appropriately filled out, that the contact link to the right account before giving them access to any data in the portal, um, just to kind of make sure you're not accidentally, you know, giving someone access to customer information that doesn't actually work at that business, for example. Um, once that's done, then the user would log in with the username and password that they've set up. So let me go ahead and log in as Justin here. Yep, maybe. There we go. And once I log in, I'm going to see the new home page. Um, so this has a couple of different dashlets on it to help me focus in on the things that I'm most likely going to want to see at this point. So first of all, I might have a question or an issue, and that's front and center right at the top of the page. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. But if it's not that I'm coming in because I have a question, maybe it's because I have an open case and I want to see what the status is or to provide more information about a question or an issue that I'm having. Um, and so I've got a list right here of all of my open cases. Maybe something just got resolved and I need to go back and look at the notes on that. So those are also right here, right on my homepage. Or maybe I want to kind of browse and find the answer to something rather than just typing a question in. I could do that through the knowledge base categories over here. If I do have an issue or a question, maybe I want to open a case about something that I'm struggling with. I can start typing my question in here. And as I'm typing, it is searching against the knowledge base articles that are shared in the portal um, and immediately directing me to relevant information that might help me solve the problem. Now, that may or may not give me the information that I need. Um, and if I don't find what I'm looking for, then I can go ahead and create a new case. So I always have the option of not being able to find the answer myself or I still want to ask for more help. I can go ahead and I can do that. All of the layouts in the portal are configurable, just like all of the rest of your Sugar layouts through your administrator tool. So you can decide what information you're asking your customers for. Do you want to ask them the case priority or not? Do you want to ask them to do any categorization or not? That's up to you to decide. And they can go ahead and they can get their case entered. That will immediately push that case into Sugar and start following all of those assignment and SLA rules to make sure that we follow up on that in appropriate time frame. I can also, as the portal user, just go into any particular module through the navigation bar. And this is going to take me to a standard sugar view, um, which means I've got the ability to use functionality like some filters. So I can see just my open cases or all of my cases, um, as well as the ability to preview from here. So if I want to see more information without fully clicking in, I can do that. If I do click into a case, I can go ahead and add a note to that case. That does include attaching a file if I've got a screenshot or a picture or something that I need to send as part of that case report. Um, and similarly, if I went to the knowledge base, I can find all of the different knowledge base information that's here. I can search, I can filter, and find what I'm looking for that way. 
one last thing that I want to make sure I didn't forget to show you, I almost did, that's why I wrote it down, is that users can come in here and edit their profile information. And that actually allows them to update the data that's stored on their contact record in Sugar. So maybe um, I didn't initially have a phone number for Justin or it's not the correct phone number. He can actually come in here and say, actually, you know, I'm at extension 55 or whatever um, and update that. And that's going to save back to the contact record in Sugar. So that's an easy way to make sure that you're collecting better information about your contacts is allowing them to just simply edit and update that information as appropriate. All right, so that's the end of our demo. We're going to switch back to our PowerPoint here. We've got a couple of other things to share about SugarServe as well as the new releases and everything. So first of all, I wanted to share this slide. I found this to be really helpful. Um, Matt Marum from Sugar created this slide for a presentation that he was doing maybe a month ago or so, and I asked him if I could use it because I really liked it, and he was kind enough to say yes. Um, this is a really great diagram showing you what features are currently available in each of the different kind of main products that Sugar is selling at this point. So we still have Sugar Enterprise that a lot of like uh, existing customers are using Sugar Enterprise at this point, but we also have the two new cloud products, Sugar Sell and Sugar Serve, and there's a lot of overlap between them, but there are also functions that are unique to one versus another. And so if you're trying to compare, for example, Sugar Serve versus Sugar Enterprise, the main features that SugarServe has that are not in Sugar Enterprise are the business centers functionality for managing those business hours, that service console view so that you can easily work your cases from that prioritized list all on one screen, and the case deflection functionality in the portal where users can be directed to information that might help them solve their problem before they even report a case. And then just a quick reminder, we've gone through this in our last couple of user groups, but I know this is a pretty major change. So SugarServe is part of Sugar's new cloud product family with Cell and Market. Um, it is only available in Sugar's cloud, so on-premise customers do not have access to SugarServe. Um, Sugar Enterprise and Sugar Pro continue to be available on-premise. The pricing for these new products, Sugar Cell and Sugar Serve, is $80 per user per month. If you wanted to get Sugar Cell and then add that person to Serve, it's only an additional $25 for a total of $105 per user per month. Uh, if you're an existing customer, they'll work with you on your pricing to not drastically increase it on you if you wanted to move to Cell and or Serve. I think we did a our last user group covered that quite a bit, and you can yeah. reach out to us, your account manager, Megan Dries, and work through that pricing if you wanted to figure out exact pricing for your situation. All right, that wraps up all of our information about SugarServe, unless we have any questions that come up. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about news and new releases. Right. First, Sugar has introduced two new products that I'm very excited about. Sugar Connect is the new Outlook integration product. It works on both Office 365, Outlook, Outlook for Mac, as well as the web-based Outlook client and the Google Gmail suite. With, the, uh, with Sugar Connect, you can see all of the data within your CRM system. You can search for records. You can archive emails, you can edit your records, you can create new records, all within your email client. It has server-side calendar and contact syncing, and it has a really neat scheduling assistant where you can send out a link to your free busy calendar and people can select a time and schedule a meeting with you. It's kind of like a product Calendly a lot of people are using. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about Sugar Connect. We have it internally. I'm using it right now. I like it. The free Outlook plugin does still exist, and they're not planning to get rid of it, so that is still an option as well. Sugar Discover is a cloud-based BI tool or reporting tool that can pull data from Sugar Cell, Sugar Enterprise, basically any on-demand or cloud instance. They're working on pulling in a lot more data as well as allowing you to pull in custom data. It runs in the 
Amazon Cloud right next to your Sugar Instance, so it's very fast to get the data. Uh, it has automated analytics and alerts that can be generated, and you can build your own. And it takes uh, snapshots in time, sort of, so you can see what your data is doing over time. And we're going to be doing uh, our next user group about Sugar Connect so that you can learn more about that product. We'll probably schedule Sugar Discover to follow shortly after that. So expect to see more information coming from us about those two new products. The latest Sugar release is Sugar 9.2 or Fall 19, which was released about a month ago in October. Um, at this point, Almost all cloud customers have been updated to 9.2. If you haven't been updated yet, I would guess it's happening within the next week or so. Um, and a lot of the focus in 9.2 was on the portal improvements. So um, we've hit on most of these already, but just to quickly walk down the list, the portal UI updates, the list view supporting filtering and previewing, ability for portal users to create username and password during sign up and reset their password from the login screen, the case deflection, searching the knowledge base prior to creating a case, um, those new homepage dash lists in the portal, the configurability of modules, company contact information and logo, um, portal registration creates contacts instead of leads, and the show and portal flag on cases, bugs, and notes now defaults to true by default instead of default and default by default so that you're showing information to your customers. They can see their stuff in the portal. Besides the portal improvements, other things that were included in 9.2, um, the business centers module was expanded so that it can now be used for contacts, leads, and users. Um, that is a feature that's available only in sell and serve and not in enterprise. Um, administrators can mass update license types for users. You don't have to go into each user one by one to assign new licenses. We've got new Stock Sugar VPN definitions available not only in Sugar Serve but also now in Sugar Cell. Um, the ability to use shared email accounts when you're sending messages. So something like a support at techadb.com group mailbox, for example. Um, we can now set up our Sugar VPN processes to send messages to you from that mailbox instead of from, you know, whatever our generic Sugar email account is. And then finally, they fixed a defect. Um, with Sugar Identity where you can now create and edit non-user employee records even if you have Sugar Identity enabled. Besides the Sugar 9.2 release, um, Sugar did have on October 1st a security patch for on-premise installations. So if you do have Sugar on-premise and you're not already running Sugar 9.0.2 or 8.0.4, um, you should definitely look into that and make sure that you are up to date on your security patches. Um, if you're on the cloud, you don't have to worry about that. That was included in one of your previous cloud releases. Sugar Mobile had a 12.0 and 13.0 update within October, both of which were focused on bug fixes and support for the latest iOS for Apple. Um, and then Hint 5.2.0 came out right at the end of October. This did have a really nice feature. This is something that Justin and I have both complained about with Hint for a very long time since it first came out. Um, the preview pane with Hint now actually allows you to have two tabs. So you still have the Hint view that you've had all along, but also you have the option to switch to just the standard Sugar preview view so that you can also see your record details. So thank you, Sugar, for finally making a way for us to do that. All right, so we won't see you again until 2020. That will be uh, January 22nd. And as Megan mentioned, uh, during that user group, we're going to be talking about Sugar Connect. I will send the registration link for that when I send the follow-up email for this, so keep an eye out for that. Um, in the meantime, uh, if there's any questions, I think you guys handled uh, the information quite well, so Maybe you covered everything pretty good for everybody, but um, obviously, <laughs> have no <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if anything comes up, um, you can always reach out to us, but um, you should be getting that follow-up email from me by tomorrow. And since we won't see you, um, everyone enjoy your holiday season and New Year's, and we'll see you in 2020.